Please welcome to the stage Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck with Bloomberg's Ashley Vance. Hello. Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Um, this is sort of a victory of sorts for me. Already, a few years ago, I wrote a book about Elon Musk, and he didn't talk to me for a long time after I wrote the book. I've just written a book about you, and here you are, still talking to me. Uh, maybe I was, I was too nice. I like it that you spent so much time with me and never figured me out at the end of it. <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> Maybe we will figure you out today. Um, you know, while I was doing this book, I mean, I, I researched, I, I spent five years on it, hanging out with you, a number of uh, space startups around the world, uh, dug into the history of the field as well. You know, if you look over the last 20 years, there's been probably about 12 legitimate rocket startups of, of some kind. SpaceX is launching about every three days. You guys have launched dozens of rockets. You're up to about twice a week if you want to. After that, the number tails off very quickly. Some people have done one or two and then, and then really had fits and starts. Um, I mean, it's amazing because, you know, there's, there's veterans of space programs at these other companies. What is it that you and SpaceX seem to have figured out that this entire rest of the industry can't, can't seem to get? Uh, that's a difficult question. I mean, I think in its, in its simplest form, it's execution. Um, you know, we're, we, we, don't, we don't tend to make a big fanfare. We're kind of just fly under the radar and just, just keep launching rockets and, and execute. And I think the space industry, the great thing about the space in industry is also the curse of the space industry. The great thing about a space industry is I could sit on a stage here and say, Ashley, uh, I'm going to go to Mars or pick an even more absurd destination. I'm going to go to Jupiter in 2030. And everybody would go, yep, cool, you're going to Jupiter in 2030. <laughs> no other industry can you say such absurd things and have people get so excited and rally in behind you. Yeah. And so that's the great thing about the space industry because it, it really promotes, you know, far, big dreams and, and, and big execution. But the challenge with it is, is that um, the space industry has historically been pretty shy on execution. So you can, you can say these wonderful things and everybody doesn't laugh you out of the room, but at the end of the day, um, after you say those things, there's a, kind of to your point, there's a big gap between um, those things being said and execution. So... Yeah, well, it, yes, and I just, I just always keep feeling like you and, and SpaceX, Rocket Lab and SpaceX have just, have, uh, I mean, you can say execution, I just, it's, it's amazing to me to watch people who've done this before still struggle. It, like, on the one hand, it's rocket science. We know this is hard. On the other hand, um, Rocket Lab, you had a group of 20-somethings that really had never built yep. a rocket before. You did not go to college for this. You were designing dishwashers at one point. Um, you know, Remarkably similar, though. <laughs> but, I mean, you've you guys have clearly figured something out that, that uh, just got all that right, um, and it's, it's, it's still sort of a mystery to me. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's um, building the right team, setting the right vision, um, building the right business around it, um, being, being kind of very deliberate about how you build your company, as well as building the rocket, um, and... Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of luck thrown in there too. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I've generally found if you say to somebody, you know, we have a motto at Rocket Lab, do what you say you're going to do. And everybody gets measured against that. And generally if you say that I'm going to go and do something and then you actually go and do it, that builds good trust. Um, and if you continue to, to do that all the way through, then um, you build a good company. You, you know, since I've known you, you you're an engineer at heart, you're very hands-on, um, you build a lot of your current workhorse, the Electron rocket, which is a bit smaller in, in New Zealand, where the company was started. You're now building this larger rocket called Neutron in the United States, um, and, and will launch it from the United States. You're really the only 
commercial rocket company that I can think of that's, that's spread across two continents. You were this very hands-on guy. I mean, you know, I'm just curious how you're adjusting and evolving as, as now it seems like your attention mm. is split. Um, you're geographically split. You probably don't get to actually wrench on things as much yeah. as, as you like to. Yeah, that's it's, it, it's a, a, a good challenge. And you can throw into that, you know, we went and acquired four different companies. So, you know, rocker lab those four companies is a huge amount of work. But I think um, as long as, as, long as the, the, the thesis and the rules are there and people follow the rules, and when I say the rules, I mean like the culture of the company, um, then, uh, you know, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to be the guy that, that screws that rocket engine to the back of the, of the launch vehicle, provided, you know, the guy who is actually screwing the rocket engine to the back of the launch vehicle understands the, the company thesis and understands, you know, all of the cultural aspects and make sure that that actually works. So, no, it's, it's definitely more challenging to spend more time in a plane than ever, but it's, it's, it's pretty fun because you get to, you know, we talk a lot about rockets, but two-thirds of our business is building spacecraft. Yeah. So we get to touch some really, really cool stuff. So I think about this, and you can you know far more about this, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you know, I, I just think about commercial space right now. We have, we've got a lot of rocket companies. The cost of launch has come down. We're launching more often. We have myriad more satellite companies putting up giant constellations. It reminds me so much of like 1996, consumer internet, companies laying fiber, building data centers, making this big gamble that something incredible was gonna happen on the internet. Um, I feel like some things were obvious that there would be businesses that would work on the internet. Most of them, it was, it was kind of, we didn't really know where this would go. In space, the first big businesses so far have been communications yep. satellites and imaging satellites. Yep. And this is like the entire premise so far of like what this is, is hanging on to a large degree. Um, you know, I'm just so curious about is that do you see that as being enough for the next 10, 15 years? Do you think something else has to come along? And, and you know, what might those things yeah, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think about this a lot because, um, you know, there's, there's always the, the, the promise of the industry and, and all the market studies that predict, you know, depending on which market study you can pick up between one and two trillion dollars is like a factor of error of 100% um, of how, how large the market will be in 2030. But I think some of the, the key factors for me that are, that are more, more comforting than ever, are you, you're seeing like real fundamental use cases from really large companies. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, Elon's got Starlink and that's kind of proving its worth. Uh, Amazon have got the Kuiper, which is kind of the, the equivalent. Um, you've seen now, uh, um, you know, Apple with their E91 service. Uh, voyage into space, and that there's there's enough kind of real use cases from real companies that um, it's 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 kind of a little bit obvious now that that is going to proliferate. Um, so, but all that stuff is really communications at a, at its core. I mean, do yeah. you think so? For people who don't know, I mean, there's pre, you know we went from 2,500 satellites like three years ago in low low Earth orbit to about 10,000 today. We've been on this suddenly exponential curve after it had been like this for, for 50 years. Mm. Huge chunk of that is communication satellites. I just always sort of think, I can see the near term, but, but like does that stuff make money? And then what mm. comes next? Otherwise, the air starts to come out of the room pretty quick. Yeah, no, I think, I think, that, I think that's a fair call. And, and um, in, in the last, I would say, 10 years, uh, you've seen a tremendous amount of venture capital flow into various space business models, and and some some have been pretty successful, and, and others you know not so successful. But I think with any new frontier, um, there is a certain amount of throwing the mud at the wall and seeing what 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 sticks. Yeah. And and you know we went through that process along for a long time, and then, like I say, now you've got like Amazon building a hugely large constellation to service their customers, and. Yeah, it, it, you, you can kind of loosely char characterize it as comms, but I mean, Amazon actually have a purpose. It's not, it's not just to sell internet to people. It's like it drives their business model and actually improves their business model. That's why they're doing it. So um, in space, often people develop cool stuff and then try and find a market for it. And um, 
I think with the inversion of that is happening where people actually have real business needs at scale that, that drive, um, drive people putting infrastructure in orbit, which is what we need. And the US government is the same. You know, if you look at the SDA programs, the, the whole move away from one or two big geostationary assets into a, a totally proliferated low Earth orbit, um, it just changes, changes the game. Do you think, I mean, some people beyond communications, they talk about manufacturing. You just did a really interesting thing where you partnered with this company called Varda that's making a, a bioreactor, a, a pharmaceutical factory in orbit. That went on a SpaceX rocket. I mean, it's this fascinating thing of like three commercial space companies, yep. um, two which are kind of quasi-competitors still pushing this thing forward. So that, that's manufacturing, this idea that you can make chemicals um, and molecules in space that are different from Earth. Um, there's talk about you know, moving data centers up into orbit and, and reducing pollution on Earth, just having them be solar powered. Do any of these applications jump out to you as the most likely? Or yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not so sure that um, launching data centers into orbit is better for the environment than keeping them on the ground. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in Varda's sense, um, it's, it's just physics, right, and chemistry. There's a fundamental, if, if you're in a zero-G environment, you know, crystal proteins grow differently. And um, in the search for, for, for kind of new and more exotic things, that's uh, un unshackling, you know, that production process from gravity is pretty game-changing. Um, and, you know, at the moment, it, it's really only been until now that you can do that as a startup um, at any kind of level of scale. Right. Prior to, you know, even 10 years ago, you just wouldn't do that. A hundred million dollars just to... Yeah, yeah, just to try. try. Yeah. Like, you know, for some tens of millions of dollars, and I know that sounds a lot of money in some senses, but for some tens of millions of dollars, you can have a crack at a yeah. really big thing. Um, if we could just pull up a slide for a second where we polled the audience. Before this, I found this fascinating. I just... I'm not trying to hawk my book, but I wrote a book that's kind of the opposite <laughs> of the results of this, this poll. I mean, to me, the most, inter you know, the most activity, the most money is not tourism, it's not Mars, no. it's in low Earth orbit where the number of satellites um, is increasing exponentially. Yeah, so I'm just kind of curious if, if you, uh, I mean, this is in our lifetime to make the most progress. We, do you, what well, is I think, your take? Firstly, I think you should send that to me. <laughs> Secondly, maybe I should get working on the neutron uh, capsule. Yeah, you get, because well, clearly I'm missing a trick. Yeah, um, but you've you've never been interested, as far as I know, in in really human space travel. No, I mean I, th I think that that is just that's a whole other level, and I I admire astronauts incredibly because um, you know I have all the knowledge, but none of the courage to ever stand stand on foot of a rocket. Um, and, and, you know, to be able to, to, to sit on a rocket and dislocate yourself, yourself from all of that risk is just, it's a, it's a special superpower yeah. to be able to do that. What do you, um, make, of the, what do you make of that, though, that, that the public thinks tourism, you know, is where this is, is heading? Well, I think as opposed to sort of industry and business. It's, it's a masterful piece of marketing from Virgin Galactic. That's what <laughs> that says to me. Yeah. Um, but I know, it's more seriously, I think, I think a lot of people kind of, like the idea of going to space, and human space flight has always been the draw card, right? I mean, it is, it is a totally different thing to watch a rocket going up, to watch a rocket going up with a human on board. That's just orders of magnitude different, and that's, that's the kind of the romance of space yeah. in a lot of sense. So it's not totally surprising that, that um, everybody wants to have their trip. So historically, you and SpaceX have been quite different. SpaceX makes large rockets. You, you made a smaller rocket, SpaceX does do humans, you guys have not focused on that. You know, moving forward, you're making this rocket called Neutron um, that is gonna compete quite directly with SpaceX's Falcon 9. At the same time, SpaceX is making a mm -hmm. even larger rocket called Starship. Um, you know, dealing with Elon, competing with Elon is, comes with its, with its challenges. It, yeah, I'm just very curious if you see SpaceX moving forward now as your most direct competitor and, and how you keep pace with this company that seems to have somewhat of a, a head start. Yeah, I mean, look, we, 
in, in some respects, a lot, a lot of people want, want to kind of play that, that card, but I guess we, we, we're on our own, our own mission and our own journey, and, and at the end of the day, everybody focuses on the rocket, like it's the exciting red stick roaring in the sky. The reality is, I'm trying to build a big, like, long-lasting, durable space company. And I think the space companies of the future are going to have their own rocket, they're going to be able to build their own satellite, and they'll have an application or a series of applications or infrastructure in orbit. And I think that's, that's the end game here, is that is if, you, if you have your own rocket and you have, can build your own spacecraft, then you can do things in orbit that nobody else can do. So in, in that sense, you know, um, SpaceX is, has kind of um, you know, focused in on internet from space and, and you know, are, are moving quickly to try and prove that business model is going to be successful or not. But I think um, you know, ultimately there's, there's going to be a number of those and um, the companies that can go to orbit at, at will um, are the ones that are going to win. So you, and I know you get asked this question a lot. I'm just curious. Now, we've just seen Virgin Orbit go, go bankrupt recently. You bought some of their piece parts. I mean, you mentioned you think there'll be a number of these companies. You're talking about like this, you know, historically we've only had rocket companies. We've only had satellite companies. Yep. You've been a software. You're talking about something much bigger than that. Um, you know, how many players are there like that? Today or in the future? No, in the future, to in support, future. Um, if, you, if you buy into this massive increase of yep. satellites, to support all that. Um, well, I mean, hopefully there'll be two. Um, <laughs> but, but do you think that's how, do you think this is like a two, two company race or, or it's more than that? Look, I, I, think, I think it'll be more than that, um, but I don't think it's gonna be 10. I think it'll be relatively small because um, the reality is that um, launching a rocket and building a rocket and going to orbit is just an assault on physics and it's really difficult to do. And it doesn't really matter, um, you know, you, you can have better compute and you can have better, you can have AI, you can have all the rest of it. At the end of the day, it's 1.1 it's .1 to 1.2 times safety factor or margin on every single thing in the vehicle. And, um, you know, materials, if you, if you look at a rocket engine, the combustion efficiency of a rocket engine hasn't really changed since 1962. We just, we just you know, increase the pressure, but the actual combustion efficiency hasn't changed. So we kind of maxed out on chemical propulsion and on physics and, and on materials and a long time ago. So most of the stuff you see is kind of tweaks around the edges or, um, you know, in, in, in kind of uh, Elon's scale is, is you just build bigger and bigger rockets. Um, so, I, you know, I think there's, there's, it's fundamentally always going to be super, super difficult to do. Yeah. We're just keeping an eye. We're just about out of time, um, what is your next launch, and you know, when is it, and, and what will you guys be doing? Um, you know what, I don't know. <laughs> and I think that's, a de that's the definition of success, that I don't know. No, but... Um, You're right to some degree, it used to be this, this all or nothing... Yeah, all uh, or nothing thing, affair, so I mean, right? uh, you know? I probably in the next, I mean, we're launching you know, every couple of weeks in general, so yeah. probably in the next couple of weeks will be another another launch vehicle that's, uh, that's ready to go. I don't know if he's telling me the truth that he doesn't know or if this is, this is an indication of how far this business has come. Um, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Ashley. Cheers. Thank you.